Again. Good morning, everyone. Good, Good morning. morning. Hey, there we go. Okay, first and foremost, guys, my name is Tom, and I will be your driver and your guide to Loch Lomond and, of course, Stirling Castle, who said men can't multitask. Uh, okay, so a couple of things before we get going, which is incredibly important. So, if any time on the tour that I say that I have important information, if everyone can pay attention, that would be fantastic. Yes, sir. Uh, first and foremost, a couple of health and safety procedures. So we do have two emergency exits on the bus. The first emergency exit is by my left hand side and there is one emergency exit door in the middle of the bus as well. There's a couple of emergency hammers on the side of the bus and of course an emergency hatch up at the very top. So please make, you, uh, make sure you make yourself familiar with these emergency features. We do have a first aid kit on board as well, and of course, a couple of fire extinguishers, just in case. Do we have any doctors on board? Yes. Yes. Yeah, no. yes. Do we have any nurses on board? No. So guys, if you feel like having a heart attack, please do that at six o'clock. Nice <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just bear with me as we're coming out of the city this morning. Obviously, we are getting ready for the world's largest theatre and comedy festival. Um, obviously, being the Fringe and the Edinburgh Tattoo. So quite a lot of places, or quite a lot of roads are closed this morning. So we're taking a little bit of a diversion out of the city. So just bear with me as we do that. Obviously, there will be quite a lot of history throughout the course of today. Uh, and quite a lot of observations as well. Uh, my only request is that you do not speak over me. The reason being is because if I am in the middle of a conversation or middle of a story talking about Mary Queen of Scots, it's very difficult if someone behind me is talking about Kim Kardashian. They're two very different women. <laughs> Can everyone understand me? Yeah. Is there anyone on the bus who does not speak English? Okay. Which language do you speak? Oh, jeez. No, 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 no. Uh, right, let's find out what nationalities we have on board, because there's quite a large mix. Uh, is there anyone else from the United Kingdom? Wow, not one person. Was that a laugh because you're English and you're nervous? Uh, anyone from the United States? Yeah. <laughs> anyone from Canada? Oh, there's rivalry. Wow. Uh, anyone from Australia? No. New Zealand? No. France? I hope you didn't understand that. Um, <laughs> anyone from India? Woo! Uh, anyone from the Netherlands? Yay. <laughs> Germany? Yep. Um, Italy? Sweden? <laughs> Brazil? Uh, Poland? Latvia? Any other nationality I haven't mentioned? Yes, Namibia! Can you? Where? <laughs> Namibia! Lamib I don't Where? <laughs> Lamibia? Namibia! In Kenya! In Kenya! Oh, Kenya! Yeah! Oh! Wow. <laughs> Oh, Africa, in Africa. Africa, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Anywhere else? Denmark. Sorry, I normally see Denmark as well. <laughs> Mexico, someone said? Yes. Oh. Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> we. Oh, no, I just said that's French. Chile. Chile. Woo! Yeah. I love Chile. It's my favourite food, Chile. I love Chile. <laughs> Anywhere else? Now we've covered. Okay, fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> Well, I have no idea where I'm going. You better have an idea, otherwise you get us This is my manager in front of us who is escorting us out of the city. Because he has learned all roads that are closed. <laughs> okay, calm yourself down with that hand. <laughs> That's the manager. That's the castle. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now we're back on track. That was such a massive diversion just to get to here. Uh, okay, so as I said, there is going to be quite a lot of history, quite a lot of uh, stories and things as well for you. 
Um, so first and foremost, obviously, you've got Edinburgh Castle on the right-hand side. This, uh, this cemetery coming up on the right-hand side as well will then reach round to the very front of the castle, uh, to one of the most famous gardens in the, uh, in the capital, which, of course, is called Prince's Gardens. Just off Prince's Street, you've probably walked along Prince's Street already. Uh, but Prince's Gardens used to be a body of water. Can anyone tell me what we call a body of water here in Scotland? A loch. Everyone repeat after me. <laughs> loch. Loch. And now you're all Scottish. Great. Uh, so yeah, so it used to be called the Nor Loch, and that translates to the North Lake. Obviously, Loch is uh, Scots, which we call Gaelic, not Gaelic. Gaelic is Irish and Welsh. Gaelic is Scottish. Close to so yes, yeah, so it was called the Nor Loch, uh, the North Lake. And uh, when they drained the Nor Loch, they found something very strange, something very peculiar. They found over 300 bodies. And I know, right? That was so dramatic. And all of these bodies were female. <laughs> and they dated back to the Edinburgh Witch Trials. Oh, shut up. <laughs> so yes, obviously, it dated back to the Edinburgh Witch Trials. Now, you could have been accused of absolutely anything here in Scotland to be a witch. You had green eyes, black hair, a black cat. Um, absolutely anything. You could have looked at another woman strangely and they would have accused you of being a witch. And what they would have done to the witches, guys, they would have nailed their hands to their knees, throw them off the top of Edinburgh Castle and into the Nor Loch. And if they floated, which of course is science to us if they have breath, then that would have been the sign of the devil. You would have been a witch. But if they drowned, they wouldn't have been a witch. <laughs> but they would have been dead. And back in 2017, Nicola Sturgeon, who was Scotland's first minister, she pardoned all of the witches on International Women's Day. Which was pretty cool. Uh, okay, so now that we're back on route, we're currently taking the western, uh, western approach out of the city. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of motorway driving this morning uh, over to the town of Falkirk, which is actually where I live. Um, so we're driving about 45 to 50 minutes uh, to Falkirk which is hilarious considering I've driven 45, 50 minutes just to come pick you up. <laughs> you could have met me there. Uh, so yeah, so we'll go to Falkirk. The reason why we're going there is because our very first stop is the Kelpies. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the Kelpies as we approach the city of our town, sorry, of Falkirk. Now I'm not actually from Falkirk, I'm not from this side of, this, uh, of the country, I'm actually from uh, the west. Uh, I am from a little town called Guruk, uh, which sits on the kind of central belt of Scotland, about 30 to 35 minutes from Glasgow. Uh, so I'm technically known as a Ouija, which is someone from Glasgow. I'm not posh enough to be from Edinburgh. So I'll tell you a little bit about myself as we get a little bit further out of the city this morning. There is something that you can do, which most people do at Loch Lomond, um, which is ride the oldest cruise in Scotland across the most impressive body of water that we have. Uh, so this is called the Sweeney's Cruise. Now this is entirely up to yourself, it is optional, but most people do it. Um, in my opinion, if you choose not to do it, there's not really much else you can do, but again, it's up to yourselves. Um, I've completely forgot how much it is, so I'll let you know after the kill piece. Uh, but basically, you have a guide on board, um, and it's the oldest cruise company in Scotland. Um, the cruise is very much French, to be fair. Um, there's a, a massive French canopy, so you can either sit inside or sit outside. It's entirely up to yourself, and obviously going around Scotland's largest loch. You'll be told exactly where you are, um, so much more about the water, so much more about the surrounding area as well. Uh, I will give you some prior warning, so don't worry. Uh, Lomnisco Palace is birthplace to one of Scotland's most famous monarchs, and of course that was Mary, Queen of Scots. Uh, so Mary was born in Lomnisco Palace on the 8th of December 1542, uh, and straight away she was set to have quite a tragic life. After six days old, her father passed away, King James of Scotland. That then meant that Mary was Queen of Scotland at six days old. 
Now, of course, that's far too young to take the throne. Mm -hmm. So her mother took it instead as Queen Regent and sent Mary to France. Now, there were a couple of reasons why Mary was sent to France. First of all, she started receiving death threats. Can you imagine that? A six-day baby receiving death threats. And secondly, there were going to be possible kidnappings of Mary as well. So as I said, her mother thought it best and sent her child to France. Now, Mary spent 15 years of her life in France. One, five, 15. And during that time, she ended up sending uh, letters back to her mother. And during that time, she ended up falling in love. And she ended up falling in love with a French boy called Francois. And luckily for Mary, he was also the Prince of France. Now, they ended up getting married, but a couple of weeks after their wedding, the King of France passed away. So that then meant that Mary was not only Queen of France, she was also Queen of Scotland. <laughs> oh, and a year into their marriage, Francois also passed away. And he ended up oh. dying with an ear infection. Now, Mary was then faced with quite a difficult decision. That was to either stay in France and keep the French throne, um, or, of course, come back to Scotland and take her rightful entitlement. Mm. The reason why it was quite a difficult decision for Mary was because at this point, Scotland was going through the Reformation. That simply meant that we were once upon a time a Catholic country, and we were reforming into a Protestant country, into Christianity. And of course, Mary was Catholic. Now, the only way that she would agree to come back to Scotland was if she, uh, or if her Scottish nobles would build her her own chapel at Holyrood Palace. The only way that they would agree to build the pal uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, the only way that they would agree to build the chapel was if Mary was to practice her Catholicism faith only in her chapel and by herself. So both parties agreed. Mary came back to Scotland and she was the next Queen of Scotland. She was met on the lead dock by her brother, servants and nobles, and there were a couple of arranged marriages set in place for Mary, but they ended up all falling through. And once again, she fell in love, and this time was with an Englishman, and his name was Lord Darnley. Now they ended up getting married, but a couple of uh, months into their into their marriage, Mary realised that Lord Darnley wasn't a particularly nice man, not because he was English. He was a bit of a drunk, and he was a bit of a ladies man, and apparently he was a bit of a man's man as well. So because of this, Mary started getting very close to one of her servants, and his name was David Rizzio. He was an Italian cook. Now, Lord Darnley and the Scottish nobles noticed and realised very quickly how close Mary and Rizzio were becoming. And this was an ever-growing problem because at this point, Mary fell pregnant. There was a theory that Mary was pregnant with David de Rizzio's baby instead of Lord Darnley's. But, in actual fact, the only person, or the only other person that David de Rizzio was sleeping with was Lord Darnley. <laughs> So, <laughs> the only way that the Scottish nobles and Lord Darnley no would uh, agree oh. to, to squash the river was by killing David de Rizzio. So one night, as Rizzio and Mary were having dinner, Lord Darnley and the Scottish nobles stormed into the room, dragged him into the middle of the chamber, and stabbed him 57 times. And you can still seven? see the blood of is David that, Erizio that, is on is the, the Holyrood Palace floors to this very day. Now, Mary was believed to be quite an intelligent young woman. She could speak up to five languages. She could speak Gaelic, English, Latin, French, and Italian. She was believed to be a beautiful young woman as well. And I'll tell you why in just a little minute. So coming up through these trees on the left-hand side is Linlithgow Palace. It's very difficult to see it at this time of year because the trees are in full bloom considering we're in the midst of our summer season. Uh, but it's literally on the left-hand side just now. Uh, it sits upon the Lilithgow Loch and it's currently covered in scaffolding. The reason why it's in scaffolding is because last year, last winter, we have three Atlantic yeah, storms, one after another, hitting up to 90 miles per hour. Yeah. 
um, wins. So unfortunately, a lot of our castles and palaces were destroyed. So we're currently fixing these issues. Uh, so back to Mary. Uh, so yes, as I said, she was believed to be a beautiful young woman. She had lovely long red hair and very fresh uh, and healthy skin. The reason why she had fresh and healthy skin was because she used to bathe in the fountain that still sits to this very day in the middle of Holyrood Palace Courtyard. And it wasn't filled with water, it was filled with white wine. White wine? Now, yeah, after the death yeah. of her dear friend, she went into quite a bit of depression, but that was very short-lived. The reason being is because Mary, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, is the, because Lord Darnley, as he was lying asleep, he was stabbed several times and then set on fire. And still to this day, we don't know who killed Lord Darnley, but we know there were two suspects. The first was Mary, everyone knew how turbulent her marriage was, and the second was the Earl of Bothwell, who Mary later went on to marry. But when Bothwell found out he was a suspect, he ended up doing a runner, and he fled to Denmark, leaving Mary prime suspect of her husband's death. Oh, does the husband... So Mary was then captured and taken to Loch Leven prison, she spent one year of her life there, until one evening she ended up flirting her way to freedom. One of the guards let her take a boat, and she sailed to England to meet her first cousin, Queen Elizabeth I. Oh, now, as you can probably imagine, cousin. Mary didn't have a particularly nice welcome into England. The English nobles knew how much of a threat Mary was to the throne, considering she was next in line, well before Queen Elizabeth I. But that didn't stop the Queen and Mary from having a very close relationship to begin with. The only way that they would communicate would be in French, because no one else spoke French in England at this point apart from the Queen and obviously Mary. But unfortunately, the English nobles persuaded Queen Elizabeth I to put Mary back into prison. So Mary spent a further 12 years in prison in England. What? And during that time, she ended up sending letters back to France to her ex-mother-in-law, who at this point was Queen. And in these letters held the organization for the assassination of Queen Elizabeth I. Now, unfortunately what? for Mary, the Queen ended up reading her letters. And she had no other choice but to set the date of Mary's execution. Now, of course, we all know that Mary was beheaded, but what a lot of people don't know, that it actually took three and a half attempts to chop Mary's head off. Now, the executioner would have been incredibly nervous. He would have been nervous for two different reasons. First of all, Mary would have been the very first female that he would have executed. And secondly, she would have been the very first royal he would have executed as well. So the first blow comes down and chops into Mary's shoulders. The second blow comes down and chops into the back of Mary's skull. The third blow comes down and chops half of Mary's neck. By this point, the executioner was sweating. He had no other choice but to carve the rest of Mary's head off her shoulders with a knife. It was also his job to hold up the prisoner's head when the execution was successful um, to show the audience. And of course, that's exactly what he did until he heard a large scream, looked at his hand to find he wasn't holding Mary's head at all, but instead he was holding a red wig. Mary Queen of Scots was bald. And we assume she was bald because the amount of stress she had to endure in her young life. What a beautiful story to start the tour. <laughs> I hate to tell you guys, but all Scottish history is incredibly depressing. Yeah. There's a lot of battles, a lot of death, a lot of gore, so if there's any kids on board, I'm sorry if you go home and have nightmares. Um, but it's very important we tell our history because we're one of the only countries in the world that has history spanning over hundreds and hundreds of years. So, let's make it slightly more <laughs> appealing. Um, so at the minute we're crossing through Pullman over to Falkirk. As I said, this is where I live. 
Uh, I live in the city, or the town of Falkirk, sorry. Uh, I've been here for about four years. Um, I actually got engaged last night. Oh, um, yes. yes. Um, so that was a surprise. Um, so yeah. Um, so yeah, so I've been here for four years, but as I said, I'm actually from Glasgow myself. Um, I, I'm a little bit late in telling you a little bit about myself, but I'll tell you about myself when we leave uh, the Kelpies. Uh, so Kelpies, what is a Kelpie? So a Kelpie is a Scottish mythological sea creature which is shape-shifting. Um, so for example, ladies, give me a very attractive male celebrity. George Clooney. Anyone at all? <laughs> Men, give me a very attractive female celebrity. Is anyone awake? George Clooney. Who? George Clooney. George Clooney. Yes. How old is he now? Uh, okay, so let's see, ladies, you see George Clooney standing next to a loch. He takes his top off. He's all sweaty from the Scottish sun. <laughs> <laughs> Which you'll never find. <laughs> uh, don't always believe it's George Clooney. It might be a Kelpie. So a Kelpie will transform themselves into something you find attractive. They'll then drag you into the water and devour your soul. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> they're not very nice creatures, but obviously they're mythological. Uh, but the Kelpies, the reason why they're here in Falkirk is because Falkirk is known as a massive market town, even to this day. Uh, there is a massive market every Friday, Saturday, Sunday at Falkirk Football Stadium. Uh, however, there is a canal uh, system that runs through Falkirk uh, called the River, uh, or the, 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 oh, sorry, I can't speak, the Cannon River, or what we call it Falkirk, the Cannon Shore Canal. And uh, what they'll do or what used to happen is we used to have very strong, fast, powerful horses called so Clydesdale horses. They used to go from Edinburgh right through the canal, right through the water, up to Falkirk, drop the goods off from the market, and then back over to Glasgow and they'll come back the exact same way. So that's what the Kelpies are here for. So what you're about to see are two 30 meter high structures of two incredibly large horse heads. Uh, a Kelpie will typically have a head of a horse and a body of a mermaid slash merman. Thomas, is it what you're showing me yesterday? They were sculpted by a man called Andy Scott, who actually owns and has sculpted a lot of uh, sculptures all across uh, the United Kingdom, but is more famously and more commonly known for more sculptures in Scotland. They were placed here on the 13th of October 2013, right next to the Helix project, which we're just about to pass, coming up on the right-hand side. Now, the Helix project is a massive park and adventure uh, kind of fun park for, for kids. A lot of people will come down here and walk their dogs. I was actually down here at 5 o'clock this morning walking my dog. Um, so I come down here every single morning because uh, I only live five minutes. Uh, in this direction. Uh, okay, so before we get to the Kelpies, before we park up, I'm just going to tell you a couple of very important pieces of information, okay? First and foremost, something that's very important on any tour is timings. Um, in the UK, coach drivers are regulated by EU regulations. Don't ask me why, because we're not part of the EU anymore. Yeah which is a massive shame, but let's not get political. Um, anyway, um, we are regulated by uh, drivers are so that does mean that the times that I'm giving you will be very specific timings and they're specific for a reason. Um, please make sure that you respect these timings. If you don't respect these timings, I had to cancel my very first tour on Thursday because I had a private tour of 10 incredibly obnoxious and incredibly rude people on Thursday. This is my first tour since Thursday, so please be nice. But I did have to cancel the tour and I left them in the middle of nowhere because they came back to my bus one hour late. Mm, I don't think that's true. So safe to say they were not happy about being left in the middle of nowhere, but believe you and me, I am that's not true. getting a £500 fine. So guys, please respect the timings. Not just that, 
but obviously for the fact that we could potentially put in extra stops that are not on your itinerary. Now one thing that I do need to make you aware of, there's a massive cycling event in Edinburgh that starts today, so we will be back to Edinburgh slightly earlier um, than planned. That doesn't mean that you're going to be taking any time off of the itinerary, it just means that we'll be taking a slightly quicker diversion home. But to battle that, the vast majority of today's tour is meant to be on the motorway, so because we're coming back into Edinburgh earlier, I'm actually going to take you through the countryside for the vast majority of today, okay? If you slow to the left hand side, you'll get your first glimpse of the Kelpies. Can anyone tell me why we have a unicorn to the left hand side? It is our national animal, absolutely. Yeah. Why? Strongest thing to a lion. That which is? English. Yes, we have a unicorn as a national animal uh, because apparently it can only defeat a lion. Don't know why. Oh, there you go. Uh, so, guys, in order to get to the Kelpies, you go right down to the left hand side of this path. There's some public toilets down there, there's a cafe down there as well. So, please make sure that you use the bathrooms before we, be, uh, before we leave because we will be going on our way to Loch Lomond, which is in Glasgow. All right. Uh, now, I will be slightly further down uh, from here. But please make sure you're back on the bus for no later than 10 a.m. Okay. Later, guys. Let's go outside and check this out. Beautiful, eh? <coughs> they say, he said it's the closest thing to a lion. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay, like, okay, obviously it's not true, but yeah, in terms of mythology. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, many people say hey, that the unicorn can kill a lion. It's stronger than a lion. So. I've never heard of that saying. Yeah. And you've never seen a unicorn as well. Of so course not. <laughs> really, really can't tell if yeah. The cowpies are 30 meters high, which is 98 feet, and they weigh 300 tons each. These are horse head sculptures depicting cowpies which are shaped shifting water spirits located between Falkirk and Grangemouth. The belt of structural steel with stainless steel cladding and the construction began in June 2013 and was completed by October 2013. How fast was that? So the helix is 350 hectares, eco park that combines art, nature and play and its centerpiece is now the Kelpies, which are two tower horse head sculptures and the park offers a variety of activities including walking, cycling trails, water sports, a children's play area, a scenic picnic spot and it is a unique blend of art, culture and natural beauty. The Helix Park is free of charge, however some of these activities or events within the park may have associated costs. So in the past, the Scottish industry and economy, they used to have heavy horses pulling the wagons, plows, barges and coal ship. So according to Andy Scott, the sculpture, this was more like a social historical monument intended to celebrate the horses role in industry and agriculture. Our time was quite limited when we were there because I was there with a tour. However, the park is accessible 24 hours a day. So if you want to get like a great close-up um, picture and just spend more time in the park you can do that any time of the day without joining a tour so these two giant steel horse heads are easily visible from a distance while driving the m5 motorway and they are standing nearly 100 feet high over the fourth and clyde canal and these are actually the largest pair of equine sculptures in the world and the cowpies are shaped shifting horse like water spirit and they are said to have the strength and endurance of 100 horses so our time here was quite limited because we still have other activities to do for the day which is our next video i'm taking you guys to loch lomond i hope i'm saying that right it is the oldest cruise in scotland and the most impressive body of water they have and we still have to go to the castle and all the other places hi guys and yeah. <laughs> hi guys and welcome back to my channel i know i didn't introduce myself today because i'm so excited we are Oh, look at that. Look at that. So pretty, right? So we are here at the... I don't know what this is, guys. <laughs> I don't know, unfortunately. <laughs> but we are somewhere in Edinburgh. 
So yeah, we're touring around and after this we gotta go back to the bus again. Then drive around, have some history. I hope you're enjoying. Did you hear the history about Queen Mary of Scott? Wow, how interesting, right? I know, I know, I know. So And if you've watched till this far, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to leave me your lovely comments down below and give me a thumbs up. Tell me what you think. I have so much installed for you, so I'll catch you guys in my next video. For now, it's goodbye.